Hi guys, Sport Tutor here and my name is Anil Deshpande. With this video, I am going to start a new series called as Android Data Persistence. In short, I am going to call it as ADP because Android Data Persistence is quite a mouthful of a word. Broadly speaking, Android Data Persistence can be categorized into basically two types that is on-device and off-device data. Some people even refer to this as offline data and online data but I will stick to the term on-device and off-device because it makes much more easy to understand where the data is. When I say persistent data, it is basically any data which I would like to access across multiple sessions of the app. Any data which is not volatile, if the application closes, the kind of data that doesn't get lost. That is what the persistent data is. In Android, on device, there can be multiple kinds of data that you can typically deal with. The starting point is basically file I.O. operations, which is reading from a file and writing to a file. There is another kind of data that typically you need to be aware of, which is shared preferences. Shared preferences are very much specific to Android and these are typically used to save the user preferences. Then there is SQLite database which is a kind of database that you typically see in most of the mobile platforms and Android is no different. And in case of file IO you may want to do it in external storage as well. And when it comes to off device data, a data that is hosted on the server, you are talking about web services. You basically access that particular data through a web service integration. Now the next question is what kind of data you typically deal with in all of these scenarios. In case of file IO, it could be any kind of data. It could be XML file, JSON file, images, CSV, Java serialization, deserialization. You can pretty much do whatever that you can do with Java in Android. Then next comes the shared preferences, which is basically a XML, but it is abstracted to the developer. You need not have to worry about how it is being maintained by the Android platform as long as you just use the shared preferences. Now comes the SQL database which is an embedded database. What I mean by embedded database is typically you might have seen a database where it is present on a separate machine which acts like a server and then you have an application which is a client and client usually hits the server and the server responds back with the data that is present in the database server. That is not how it works here. Embedded database means the database is part and parcel of the application. The database is not a separate entity than the application. That is why we use the word embedded database. It is a relational database just like any of the other popular databases that are out there in the market. Whatever the SQLite database that you might implement for the application, you may want to share it with another app. In that case, you have to use a something called as custom content provider. In case of web services, the data types that we typically see is JSON, XML and images for that matter any kind of file that you want to receive from the backend. XML is very rarely used in the mobile applications because parsing the XML is considered to be much more resource intensive than the JSON. To understand some of the topics you need to have a proper understanding of certain concepts. If you want to do file IO you should know Java IO streams concept input stream output stream buffered input stream buffered output stream file input stream file output stream all those concepts anything related to SQLite database you need to be familiar with relational database management systems if you have any kind of experience of having worked with say MySQL or SQL server or Oracle it will be really be helpful because basically you will be writing SQL queries and the SQLite SQL queries are not that much different from your regular database queries and the third part is web services. To be good at these things, you should know how to parse a JSON, parse a XML, and you should not hit web service on main thread. If you don't know what is a main thread, how to spawn a thread from the main thread, you can just visit few of my other videos where I have explained what is multi-threading in Android, how the async task works. So that would be a good starting point. And then you should have a, a very basic understanding of what is a web service, what it means to consume a web service, what are restful web services, what is a get request, post request, put request, delete request. So not too much of fancy in detailed idea is needed, but it would be good to have some kind of understanding of how the web services work. So in the next video, I'll be starting with file IO discussion. That brings us to the end of this particular video. Don't forget to like, comment, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Take care. Bye.